法师，各位菩萨，大家晚安。呃，很高兴今天大家来到现场哈，来听这个讲座哈。那我们这个是法鼓讲堂的一个特别讲座，世界佛教系列的讲座。那有几位我看，呃，前几次都有都有来哈。那我们都邀请到了几位非常特别的这个讲者。那我们今天的讲者也非常的特别啊，呃。他的名字叫做李世娟，哈，那我们一般都称他英文名字 Rebecca， 哈。那其实哈，我跟他也不熟，<笑>我对他的认识就是透过师傅的书，哈。大家可以从我们现在投影出来看到的海报，哈，这个这些照片，哈，在法古杂志的报道或是师傅的书都会看到，呃，他的身影，哈，那就是 Rebecca 菩萨，哈。那他是师父的英文的翻译。那他从这个没有学佛到开始学佛学禅修，成为师父的翻译，到现在在担任禅修的老师。哈，那这个过程是怎么来的？哈，这是今天他要跟我们分享的故事。哈，那 Rebecca 本身呢，自己在学佛教禅修的同时，其实现在还是在大学里头担任社会学的。教授哈，所以他身兼数职哈。那我们大家在学佛这个禅修的过程，应该也很想知道，怎么样在这样的一个生活当中取得一个呃佛法事法的一个平衡哈。那所以今天的呃演讲非常的精彩，我们大家一起来聆听。那我们最后会留大概半个小时的时间，可以让大家发问哈。那今天呢也很特别，我也想介绍一下今天的翻译者哈。我们的翻译哦，大家来过几次应该都知道哈，认识张黎文菩萨哈，呃 ，Doris， 他其实呢也是师父的翻译，好，也是师父的翻译，一个在西方，一个在东方哈。那呃，他现在呢也是辅大英语系的教授哈，所以一样也是释法佛法哈，怎么样这个取得一个平衡平衡？他平常呢也在我们农禅寺担任。导览英文的导览哈，所以大家也可以常常看到呃黎文菩萨的身影哈。那啊，请坐哈。那今天呢？今天其实 Rebecca 的呃，他他中文其实我觉得是很好，国语是很好，可他很客气哈，他担心自己讲不好，因为他其实常用的语文语言是英语还有广东话。好，广东话，所以他担心自己讲不好，其实他讲得很好哈。那所以今天我们又请了呃翻译，那让这个整个，我想在对 Rebecca 来讲，他的表达会更顺畅哈。所以大家等一下呢，要用中文发问都没有问题，他可以直接听得懂哈。好，那我们今天就欢迎我们的讲者来呃进行今天的分享。好，谢谢，谢谢。国一法师，嗯、um, ，and、uh, thank you, thank you, 国一法师 for letting me to do this talk in English, um, because my Mandarin is really not very good, and I'm so happy that Doris is willing to do the translation, um,、uh, because you will have a much better experience. Uh, you will hear me asking, how do I say this in Chinese over and over again? So thank you for indulging me. 首先，非常谢谢那个呃国义法师呢，让我愿意就是说让我用中文来啊、呃，用英文来做那个这次的呃呃这次的讲座啊、呃，因为呢，可能大家过程当中会常听到说，哎，这个中文怎么讲，那个中文怎么讲啊、呃，所以呢，我很高兴我的那个翻译者 Doris 呢，他可以愿意帮我做一个这样的一个翻译，我相信各位呢，在这样的运作模式下呢，会获得更好的一次体验。嗯 ，Thank you， 嗯、um,。Also, thank you,、um, Guo Yi Fa Shi, for your kind words in the introduction. And、uh, yeah, last year, I think it was two years ago or three years ago. Time flies. That was the first time、um, I met Guo Yi Fa Shi when I came to the Shenyun Conference at,、um, in, at the university. Yes, and、uh, so it was a really lovely、uh, visit. And、uh, thank you so much for inviting me back here for this、uh, for this talk. 
。好，说同时呢，我也要谢谢国艺法师哈，这个呃邀请我来做这个法鼓讲堂这次的讲座哈。我大概是两年前在那个是不是三年前 ？Twenty sixteen。Yeah, something like that. So that was 二零一六年，应该就是两三年以前了哈，算两三年以前。然后呢，就是在圣言思想研讨会上面遇到国呃国义法师。然后那时候是不是也参参观过？你说的大学是指 which one？ 台大。台大啊 ，OK。所以在那个时候也是顺便去参访台大。那那是一次非常好的一个经验。那谢谢国义法师邀请我来做这个讲座。Thank you. Um. So when Guo Yi Fa Shi asked me what I like to talk about, I had no idea, and I thought maybe you, um, I talk about my practice with Shifu, um, since everyone would be interested. So, when Guo Yi Fa Shi invited me to speak, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. So, when Guo Yi Fa Shi invited me to speak, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. So, when Guo Yi Fa Shi invited me to speak, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. So, when Guo Yi Fa Shi invited me to speak, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. So, when Guo Yi Fa Shi invited me to speak, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. So, when Guo Yi Fa Shi invited me to speak, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. So, when Guo Yi Fa Shi invited me to speak, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. So, when Guo Yi Fa Shi invited me to speak, I didn't know what I was going to Perhaps it would be helpful to talk a little bit about how I met Shifu and how I came to practice with him. Um, I I met Shifu when I was in graduate school in California, and uh, at that time, I was having some difficulty in my life, and somehow I decided to just try something different. Actually, what I tried first was to learn Aikido, and uh, it's sort of like a way to switch my mindset into just doing something very different. I was a very cerebral person. Um, a social scientist, and I actually met the person who became my husband. Uh, most people thought I made him Buddhist. It was actually the other way around. Uh, he introduced me to Chan practice. Uh, at that time, he was practicing with Gilbert in Riverside, California, and he introduced me to go to his meditation group. But actually, at the same time, I was also reading a number of books by Shifu, um, borrowed by from from a Buddhist uh, monastery. That was the time before Amazon.com, and uh, so it was very difficult to get the books. And it, they, those books were very useful. And I find Shifu's teaching so straightforward and um, and and really useful in helping me with my difficulty at that time. So I was really interested in meeting Shifu. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, actually, uh, 可能大家会想知道说我是怎么样子遇见师傅，然后怎么样在什么样因缘之下跟着师傅开始禅修的。其实那个时候我大概是呃遇到一些人生的低潮跟困跟困惑的，就是比较辛苦的一段时间。呃，那那个时候呢，是在那个时候。Did you meet your husband at that time? That he wasn't my husband yet, but. Yeah, you meet, you yeah. met the future. So, yeah, in that time, actually, I also met my future husband. So, many people would say that I should be the one who takes my husband to become a Buddhist. But in fact, it's the opposite. Because he introduced me to my teacher of meditation. At that time, he took me to meet Gilbert. Gilbert is another one of the Buddhist teachers. At that time, he invited me to the Gilbert Center in Riverside. At that time, he invited me to the Gilbert Center in Riverside. At that time, he invited me to the Gilbert Center in Riverside. At that time, he invited me to the Gilbert Center in Riverside. 加州 Riverside 这个禅修的道场呢，去修行。其实，在那之前，我试过一种方法。Did you mention a very special way to change your mindset? What is it? No, just to practice Aikido. It's like a Aikido, like a. 和寂道 ，OK。所以他那时候其实，在遇见禅法佛法之前，他其实一练习那个和寂道。谢谢菩萨啊，好，那就练习那个和寂道，希望说可以就是让心念转变转变一下。那后来呢，在 Gilbert 他们的团体的介绍之下的话，其实那时候因为没有 Amazon 书没有那么好取得，所以他就刚好可以跟他们借了一些师傅的著作。所以那时候他已经开始阅读师傅的著作了。那因为图书取得不易，所以其实是蛮蛮珍贵的书。那他在读的时候，就其实非常非常欣赏师傅的教法，因为非常直接，对，所以他就觉得说，嗯，看得非常受用。And it was very fortunate of me. It was um that what that year Shifu was visiting LA. Um, he rarely went to California because it was really far away. And um, and he was going to hold a refuge ceremony, and so I took the opportunity to go um, to see Shifu's lecture. But I also knew that I was going to take refuge with him. So the very first time I met him, I took refuge with Shifu. Which year was that? Do you remember? I think it's ninety five. Nineteen ninety five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
给吴念我问一下很重要的一个讯息，他就说大概在一九九五年的时候，那那时候因为师傅平常比较少到西岸那边，美国西岸那边，那刚好他知道消息说师傅要到那个地方去做一些讲座，那同时呢也要授传授三皈依，所以呢他就是很高兴。然后他自己心里知道说，他就是要跟着师傅，就是受三皈依。然后呢，他也当然去参加师傅的几场讲座，就在那个地方。And at that time, I I was already trying to get into his retreats. The very first time I went to Gilbert's class, someone just came back from his retreats in the Chan Center in New York, and、uh, so he brought back news about how it was at the retreat and. That was my very first class、uh, in the meditation group, and the first time I heard about a retreat, I felt that's what I want to go do. I don't know what that would be about,、um, and it was very difficult to get in the retreat at that time. Some of you might know they only had thirty thirty slots, and、um, so I actually need to apply a couple times before I was able to attend the first retreat with Shifu. Wow! So, next, we're going to share how he went to attend Shifu Dai's retreat. 呃，就是他那时候呢，其实，在 Gilbert 的那个禅修中心的话，就已经听到有人去纽约的，应该是东珠禅师，啊，就去纽约的东珠禅师呢，跟着师傅打禅期。那大家都知道说，其实那不是容易的事情，啊，所以他其实在那个呃，这个 Riverside 的这个禅中心就开始有些学习了。好，然后但他也一心希望能够去师傅在纽约的那个禅中心去打七。那大家都知道这不是一件容易的事，为什么？因为他只有三十个位置，他就一心很想说，真的有机会，因为他从那个去参加过师傅带的那个禅七的菩萨，他们后来回到西岸就在分享说，师傅在带的禅七是怎么样一个状况，就非常殊胜，然后他就一心很向往，然后他试试看，他必须要尝试好多次申请。才能够真正的去到那个纽约东周禅寺跟着师傅打气。So、um, I was finally able to get to Shifu's retreat the following year, and this is the first. I can't understand the Chinese. How do I display this?、Um, this uh, you want to play?、Uh, you can look at the icon here. Yeah, that's right. You can see the no no. The projection. Can you see the screen on the? Yeah, here. Can you see the screen here? Yes, ma'am. The 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 next one. The next one. Yes. Yeah, right. 好，那他想要跟大家分享他们的照片。This is actually not that、uh, particular retreat picture, but I we got a retreat picture for every retreat we've been to, and this is the one I was able to find very easily、um, from my pile of things. So.、Um, In the first retreat,、um, it was a very unforgettable experience.、And、one thing I can remember was、um, the first time I went into the interview with Shifu.、Um, all I did was cry, and、uh, so Shifu actually got a little annoyed. He was like, "Why you? Why do you keep crying?" But、uh, I just had this feeling that I was so happy I finally found him. So.、Um, I said that was one thing that、um, that was really special for me in the retreat. So you mean right after 1995, you went yeah, to the very first retreat, 96. So, 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 so
Um, I also really like this picture because I see a lot of familiar faces. Actually, one person is in this room in this picture. So um, I let you figure out who that is. <laughs> 好，那他其实为什么会喜欢这张照片呢？因为里面有很多很多很熟悉的面孔。那他说里面其中有一位就在我们现场，然后他希望我们在座的大众呢可以帮他找出那个人到底在哪里啊，在照片中的哪里。And another thing at that retreat was,、um, I actually couldn't understand Shifu's talk in Chinese, because、um, Shifu's Mandarin has a lot of accent, on, and my Mandarin is really bad. And、um, so I was, I was listening to the English translation by Mingyi. And at the end of the retreat, we,、uh, because the retreat was small at that time, so we each could give our sharing individually. And、um, so I had to give the sharing in English. So I did lines to sharing, and、um, I couldn't remember what I said, but I could remember what Shifu said after I said my sharing. He just looked at me and said that you're going to help a lot of people, and I didn't quite understand how I could help any people because I couldn't even understand his talk in Chinese. But I, but that's, but that was something that stayed with me,、um, that that actually turned out to be really important for my practice.、Mm -hmm. How. 所以呢，其实，在那次的禅期之后呢，因为在那个过程当中，其实师傅的开始都是用中文嘛。那其实他说他的中文很差很破。那师傅讲话，师傅用中文开始，但是师傅有一些口音，那他的他的中文又很烂，所以他就觉得他就听不懂师傅在讲些什么。那都当时都是靠着那个明仪菩萨哈，另外一位师傅的翻译王明仪菩萨来做翻译，透过他的翻译了解师傅的开始内容。那他因为他那时候是一个非常小型的一个禅期，就是参加的禅众其实不多，所以每个人都可以有机会分享他们的心得。在结束的时候，那他其实不太记得他那时候分享到什么样子的内容了。可是呢，在那次的禅期的分享之后呢，他永远记得师傅当时给他的一个话，他就说：“师傅跟他讲说，你即将会帮助到很多很多很多的人。”他那时候不懂为什么自己师傅会跟他讲说他会帮助到很多人，但是呢，他他记得永远记得说师傅当时跟他讲的这个话，他会帮助很多人。那这就是他那次禅期第一次跟师傅打气的时候印象最深刻的一件事情。I think one of the effects of what Shifu said to me was to um impress upon me that the practice is about bringing benefits to others. It's not about me. And、um, I didn't think about it in these exact words at that time, but that's sort of what I had integrated in 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 me.、Um, now that I think back to what happened. 那我其实从现在这个现在这个时间点回溯哈，当时。这件事情让我印象这么深刻。其实，在跟着师傅打气的那第一次经验，其实就是开始承受师傅的一种教法，就是禅修呢，它的一个很关键的点是在于利他，帮助其他的人。那在那之前，其实我并没有常常是这样子去这样一样思考，并没有从这个角度去思考说要去利他这件事情。但是，慢慢的在我的修行跟我的这个呃生活生命当中，就把。这个利他的这一个要素呢，就成为我生命当中以及我修行当中一个很重要的部分。And、what I can decipher is that、um, from that time on, I began to put、uh, practice as a priority in my life. So at that time, I was in my twenties,、um, trying to figure out the direction of my life, and、um, it was very fortunate of me to be able to encounter Shifu at that time. So he helped me.、Um, Really think about the general direction of my life. For example,、um, how to make important career decisions.、Um, taking my academic position.、Um, if I take the wrong one, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. So,、um, and also thinking about where I would like to go, because、um, I opened a map with 50 states. Where would I end up? And、uh, it was straightforward. I end up where I could go see Shifu very easily. So that's how I ended up in New Jersey. <laughs> I have to recall. Ah, so, um, actually, just say, at that time, uh, Rebecca was twenty-two, twenty-two years old. She was very happy to be there. 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 She was very happ
，在那个时候他就获得很多的指指导，然后知道说自己生命要往哪一个方向走。那特别是比如说，做一位大学老师，他后来就知道说，他如何协助年轻人找到他们对他们最适合的一个生涯规划，或者是人生的方向要怎么走，以及最后呢，比如说你，比如说你打开美国的地图，你看到五十个州，那你要落脚在哪一个地点呢？好，那他觉得他自己很幸运，他就选择一个最能够接近到师傅的地方，就是纽泽西州。And so I recall the first year I was、um, an assistant professor, and at the time my husband was still in California finishing up his doctorate, and so my weekends are free. So、um, what did I do every weekend? Chan Meditation Center. <laughs> I took the train, go into Queens, and spend a weekend there、um, volunteering, and that gave me the opportunity to go to Shifu's classes, and.、Um, Those those were really precious time, and I remember that、um, every time when Shifu came back from Taiwan,、um, then we would get to share meals in the basement. If you have been to Chan's meditation center, and、um, every single time Shifu came back, the key thing he asked was how we could bring Chan practice to the West, and it was very clear to me that. This was something very, very important and dear to his heart, and it registered in my mind that、um, it was a very important priority for him. And I, I kept thinking what I could do to、um, to support him, his effort. That's what what came, what was what was internalized in me. 所以那个时候，其实他就到纽泽西州，然后就获得了那个助理教授的这样的一个职位。那当年的话，他的先生还在那个加州，好还在完成他的博士学位，所以他就很闲，不不能说很闲，他就是有自由，他就比较多的自由这样子。然后呢，那你如何运用这个自由的时光呢？他的抉择就是，当然是跑到禅中心去禅修啊。所以每个周末他就跑到禅中心去。然后呢，特别是他可以在那边做一些义工啊，然后帮帮忙啊。然后，呃，最开心的是每次师傅从台湾回到美国的时候啊，就有机会跟着师傅一起分享晚餐，对不对？在他们的地下室，好，然后呢，分享晚餐，然后呢，他那时候也可以常常去听师傅的一些课程，对。那他印象特别深刻的就是，当深深打打动他的，他特别记忆深刻的一件事情，就是师傅每次从台湾回去，或者师傅每次回到禅中心，常常就问他们说，我们该如何把禅法传到西方来？好，这件事情让他就是一直铭记于心。那他也就开始思考说：我该做什么？我该怎么样做才能够去护持师傅这样的一个心愿？他很清楚，这个是师傅很重视、很重视的一个心愿，所以很想帮师傅。So this, I'm sharing this picture, like it's the scene of the Chan Meditation Center,、um, of us, of course, sitting there to listen to Shifu's teaching. So, 那就是这就是一张照片哈，大家就是很很温馨的，就是一个小小的空间，那大家就是很开心的在那边一起跟着师傅禅修，然后呢听着师傅的开示，哎，所以大家可以在照照照片当中看到当时的景况。So the person who sat next to me is that that's my husband, and、uh, in you don't want to show, you don't want me to introduce them to your husband. <laughs> He's in this picture here.、Uh, this is the picture of.、Um... Okay, wait a minute. I haven't in,、uh, introduced the photo. 刚刚那张照片，我叫他跳回去哈，因为他说那个坐在他旁边就是他的先生啊。我说，哎，你要等一下，不能够跳太快。他说他在，他就在我旁边了哈。好，大家可以看到哈，可以看照片当中看到 Rebecca 菩萨跟他的先跟他的同修。好 ，Okay, you can go on to the next one. <laughs> And.、Um... In the the after the first year, I w- I moved to the East Coast.、Um, my husband and I got married, and when we moved to the、um, East Coast,、um, we asked Shifu to bless our marriage. So he didn't come to our wedding; it was in California, and、uh, but we asked him to give us the blessing.、Uh, th- this was actually at the end of a retreat.、Um, so and.、Um, During the blessing ceremony, Shifu asked us,、um, "So,、um, okay, are you to get married? Are you going to have children?" Said, no, we're not going to. We don't plan to have children.、It's、like, oh, you're not going to have children. Then you're going to have to practice hard. <laughs> and、um, 
we're so, I'm so thankful that he said that, um, that you know, he wanted to make sure that he reminded us that um, we do have to practice hard, um, not to just squander the time. 好，所以呢，他为什么刚刚跳到这一章？因为这张意义对他们，我相信对他们两位都是意义深重的哈。因为他们的婚礼是在西岸举行，所以师傅是没有办法去的。但他们到东岸的时候呢，刚好在禅修结束、禅期结束之后呢，他们就呃请师傅给他们祝福。对，啊，那当然，看画面当中大家都看到了，师傅就祝福他们的婚姻。好，然后呢？当中刚刚有 Rebecca 菩萨学那个分享说，那师傅就问他们呐、啊，啊，你们有打算生小孩吗？好，然后呢，他们就说没有哎，没打算生小孩。所以师傅就跟他们勉励了一句话说，哦，那不生小孩哦，可是记得哦，要精进修行哦。所以很高兴师傅跟他们提醒说要精进修行，因为呢，他们就知道不要浪费生命。Um, so during that、um, first year, actually before the ceremony. I started to train to be Shufu's translator, and、um, which was one of the greatest blessings of my life to have the opportunity to practice、um, with Shufu in that way. And、uh, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't understand.、Uh, my Mandarin is horrible, and still am.、Uh, and and、um, and I. Try to figure out how to understand his Mandarin. So,、um, what I did was listen to、um, translation did, did,、um, that Bingyi did、uh, over and over and over again. So, I listened to Shifu's talk and then I listened to translation to learn both Shifu's accents and also to learn all the Buddhist terms.、Um, so, and incredibly, Shifu took a chance on me. He let me translate for him.、Uh, <laughs> And and so I started translating for him in、um, Chan Meditation Center when he gave Dharma talks there. 好，接下去精彩的内容就来了。这是我家的。好，<笑>就在那之后呢，其实他就开始训练自己，成为师傅的翻译。好，那因为他其实刚刚他已经跟大家分享过他的中文不好，然后师傅的口音他听不太懂，所以呢，他是怎么练的呢？他就是不断不断的去听师傅的开示。然后呢，以及明仪的翻译，然后呢，一方面他也可以学习中间的佛法的概念跟佛法的智慧，然后不断不断的就是一直重复的听，一直重复的听，让自己熟悉师傅的口音，也是让自己知道说哦，师傅那个在讲些什么，那明仪英文怎么翻的？最后呢，师傅他觉得跟帮师傅翻译是一个最大的一个福报，因为他可以透过这种方式跟着师傅修行，好，所以呢。他他刚刚是说，他用的英文是说，师傅呢就在他身上冒险，我不觉得了，我觉得师傅会是英雄啊。师傅在他面，在他的身上冒险，让他真的在禅堂当中替师傅做翻译。So this is one of actually I don't really have a lot of pictures of me sitting next to Shifu as the translator, even though everyone told me that I've seen you sitting next to Shifu as his translator.、Um, so it is a really great way to learn the Dharma. Um, because I really need to make sure I understand what Shifu was talking about, and、um, also I have to really pay attention to everything he was saying. I cannot doze off like many people <laughs> when they were in Dharma talks or during retreats, and、uh, so really、um, have to practice diligently to be able to maintain the clarity of mind and pay attention. Um, so those are all really great way to engage in the practice. That's why I said it was、um, a great blessing. 好，所以虽然很多人都跟我说，哇，他在很多的场合都看到他坐在师傅旁边做翻译，但他其实真的要找照片的时候，其实不容易找到。那现场就是一张很珍贵的，他坐在师傅旁边做翻译的时候，大家把。那那个获得的照片啊，那其实事实上帮师傅翻译，他认为是一种非常非常嗯有帮助的一种修行。为什么呢？因为其实当大家可能打瞌睡的时候，你做翻译的人，你必须要全神贯注的听师傅要讲些什么。那而且呢，你要知道说，你要很确定自己了解师傅在说什么。好，所以这个其实是非常非常的呃精进的修行。好，然后呢？所以他就认为说，其实真正就是呃，作作为一个翻译呢，他也可以就是因为在做翻译的时候，你头你随时要保持头脑的清醒，所以你要必须要非常精进用功的禅修，才能够在这种关键的时刻呢
真的是可以做好翻译的工作。那而且他认为说做翻译这个工作其实是最好的修行。And I also find that it was a really great way to learn about how to cultivate the bodhisattva path. Um, over the years, a lot of people will come to me and say that, "Oh, Rebecca, thank you so much. I feel so sorry for you that you cannot really be in the retreat completely because you have to translate." Um, but actually, that's not my experience at all, um, because. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I will be able to have a clear mind to understand and listen to Shifu's talk and to be able to translate so that everyone can benefit from his teaching. Um, actually, it helped my practice. Um, I, I don't have any space to dwell on my problem or on my suffering and um, to really um, make sure that I can settle down my mind and um, focus on the practice. So um, through that experience of being a translator, it really helped me understand the way the Bodhisattva path works is that when we prioritize benefiting other sentient beings, we are the one who for sure will benefit. 好，这个我想大家应该非常了解。就算刚刚他讲的是英文，大家都很都了解哦。就他觉得说，透过翻译这件事情呢，他只能够体验菩萨道的修行。好，因为其实很多菩萨会跟你说，哦，谢谢 Rebecca 菩萨你的翻译，那我觉得很遗憾哈，你没有办法全神贯注的在禅期当中，因为你过程当中不能够像我们这样子专心的在禅修，你还要做翻译。好，可是他认为说，刚好不是这样子，因为要做翻译这件事情呢，你必须要更加的保持你的清醒，保持你心灵的清醒的状态，同时呢，你就没有时间跟心力呢去花在那个放。把那个注意力放在自己身上，然后担心自己的烦恼，处理自己的烦恼，这些你必须要怎么样呢？在优先顺位上面呢，要以利益他为第一。那当你就是一心一意的，就是希望能够做好翻译的工作，然后让大众能够从师傅的开示当中能够去获得法益的时候，忘了自己的时候，其他自己本身透过这样的修行，他也真的是得利了。好，所以呢，他认为说，透透过做翻译的这件事情，其实是真正他可以体验到说，菩萨道的修行是如何运作的。当我们把那个优先顺位，把利他为第一这件事情去实践的时候，其实到最后自己也是会得利的。And、um, at the same time, around the same period, a lot of things happened in the ninety eight, ninety nine. I started being Shifu's translator, and also.、Um, Had another great blessing of working on Shifu's English autobiography.、Um, I got onto this project when Kenneth Wapner brought the proposal to Shifu to work to put together an an autobiography for him,、uh, which was、uh, which was eventually published by Doubleday, a very big publisher in the U.S. and、um, the process was a really long one. Um, I said ten years in the making.、Uh, it started in '98 when the proposal was made, and、um, because Shifu was traveling back and forth and had only very limited time for us to inv- interview him to get the material for the book,、um, so it took actually a number of years、um, during retreat. Um, during the time I traveled with him overseas, when I had some time, so whenever Shifu had some downtime, he would let me、uh, do an interview to get the information to put put together this book, which was finally published in 2008. 好，那接下去呢？在那段时间里面呢，除了帮师傅做翻译之外呢，他其实觉得自己很有福报，可以做另外一件事情，也就是帮师傅出版，好，帮师傅把那个。呃，出版了一本师傅的自传。那这个出版的这个自传的，大家画面上看到这个照片的，其实花了十年 （ten years）， right？、Mm-hmm. 因为呢，在一开始的时候是有一位叫做 Kenneth， 对不对？ Mm-hmm. 好，这个菩萨他就是跟师傅提一个那个提案说，说想要帮师傅制作一部英文的一个自传。好，那当然那个呃提案通过了，但是呢，因为师傅很忙，飞来飞去。好，然后他们其实是没有时间，真的可以坐下来，常常去搜集到我们要写自传的相关的资料。所以呢，大概花了好多年的时间，然后他就是透过跟着师傅到处旅游，然后帮师不是旅游，跟着师傅到处去
对不起哦，口误。<笑>好，跟着师傅到处去旅行，然后呢，在那个师傅有空档的当下，他可能到处去弘法去旅行。对不起，我我我会把他呃，应该是说师傅去弘法之旅，对不对？弘法之旅，谢谢你纠正我。<笑>你看你的中文比我好啊，对，所以呢，就他他跟着师傅到处去弘法之旅的过程当中，可能会有师傅有空档的时候，哦，或者是他们在禅期当中，然后师傅刚好有空档的时候，他就会利用机会去问师傅一些相。关的资讯，然后把这些资讯好把它记载下来，最后大概十年之后，就是二零零八吗？嗯 ，OK， 大概在二零零八年的时候，这本师傅的英文的自传终于出版了，而且是有一个很大的一个 Double Day 的这样的一个出版社来出版这本书。And、um, so the following year, some of you might have heard that Shifu、um, conducted the first forty-nine day retreat at Damadrang Retreat Center. And、um, so during that retreat, I had a lot of opportunity to practice translating、uh, for Shifu, and I learned a lot of、um, the term terms I needed to translate、uh, effectively. And、um, but that's also an important year because that was the year that Shifu was invited to、um, to speak at the United Nations at the Millennium World Peace Summit. And、um, that actually marked the year when Shifu became incredibly active as a in the、um, international scene as one of the religious leaders,、uh, one of the main Buddhist representatives in these conferences. And、um, I also、um, that that's what I was doing, go traveling with Shifu,、uh, not not、um, not to、really、travel for, for to, leisure.、Um, a lot of time it was for the for 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 attending these religious leaders meetings. How? Uh, about two thousand, right? Starting, starting two thousand, yeah. So, 大概在两千年的时候，那 so is the thirty-nine day retreat also around the same time. Yeah. So, 大概在那段时间当中，其实师傅就开始带那个禅四十九，所以他就开始有机会进行有史以来帮师傅翻译最密集的一段时光，而且在那个时候，他就有机会去。到就是很认真的去搜寻、去找、去研究，说该如何把师傅的那些呃教法呢翻译成英文？好，这是其中一项。那在同时之间呢，几乎是因为那个时候师傅又应邀到那个呃联合国总部。好，代表汉传佛教做那个千禧年世界宗教及精神领袖的和平高峰会当中呢，师父做主题演说嘛。那在那段期间的话呢 ，Rebecca 菩萨有机会呢，跟着师父，就是跟不同的宗教领袖做会谈、做对话、做交流。所以在大概在那段时间里面，就是很多机会跟着师父去，然后呢去呃做进行种种的那个弘法活动跟交流活动。我就不敢再讲旅行了。<笑> So、um, it was actually during the Millennium World Peace Summit that the idea of forming the World Council of Religious Leaders emerged.、Um, many of you have heard about what happened after that, and、um, so this is actually a picture of the very first meeting convened. To it was like the, this is the meeting that birthed this、uh, World Council of Religious Leaders.、Um, Around Shifu was、uh, uh, sitting around the, the conference table at the Rockefeller Estate in、um, up,、uh, in New York.、Uh, in that fall, the fall of、um, two thousand、uh, uh, uh, of that year, and、um, and was to part of the meeting was to plan the inaugural meeting for the World Council of, of Religious Leaders in Bangkok the following summer. And that was the first time I traveled internationally with Shifu as his translator, and I had to fly directly from New York to Bangkok to start translating for him that day.、Um, so I kind of need to learn how to sleep on the plane, which I did not know how to do. I told Shifu that I I can't I can't sleep on the plane, and Shifu said, "Practice." And、um, that's what I did.、Uh, that was the first time on the on a long haul flight that I made myself keep my eyes closed and actually slept enough so that I could get off the plane and start translating for Shifu.、Um, the reason why I told this story was it was actually a very important experience because I realized that when I told Shifu I can't, and then Shifu said practice, he was telling me. Don't believe it when you tell yourself I can't. It is a thought 
that you have created in your mind that we should not believe automatically. And um, so the years um, since then, I have encountered a number of times when I remember this teaching, that when I tell myself I can't, which is really placing limitation on my ability, um, I practice challenging this belief, this habit of believing that I can't do something. And uh, this is an incredibly important teaching that I received from Shevo. Um World Council of Religious and Spiritual Leaders 因为我被不熟我不可能做到，我怎么可能在飞机上这么长程飞行当中睡得好？好，因为一下飞叫做翻译的话，你尽量很好。那师傅就exactly what is the word 师傅 use? Do you remember? Practice. Practice. 师傅 said English. 练习。好，OK。所以我哎哎，我我要用中文，用用那个师傅真的讲的那个话。所以当Rebecca菩萨跟那个师傅说，我办不到，我在飞机上怎么可能睡得好？那师傅就跟他讲练习这两个字。那为什么刚刚这两个字这么重要他后来回想了所以他在他后来的生命过程当中，好多次他觉得说自己做不到或碰到困难的时候呢，他就会提起这两个字，practice或者是练习，克服自己的现实，这样子。讲的真好。Because <笑> your experience is very great. And um, so. Since that time, since the, um, the 2000, 2001 onward, whenever my teaching schedule as professor allowed, I translated for Shifu at retreats, um, the public lectures, both at the Chan Center or university or other places. And I traveled with Shifu to translate for him in these religious leaders meetings um, at Jerusalem. Um, we went to Dublin, Amman in Jordan, and also in retreats um, in Switzerland. And also we um, went to give public talk in Tel Aviv. So um, that's, that's what I meant when I was talking about traveling. 就是跟不同的宗教领袖做一些交流，然后比如说在这个禅堂当中帮师傅做，在禅期当中帮师傅做翻译，然后呢也飞到世界各国去呢，跟不同的宗教领袖做对谈，或者是在大学当中演讲，
，然后后来也有去那个安曼这些地方，那也去了瑞士呢去做呃带领禅期，那也在呃一些地方做一些大型的演讲，那过程当中呢都是 Rebecca 帮师傅做翻译，好，这就是他刚刚所说的他们进行一系列的弘法之旅的一个意思。So this is the, these are a few pictures. I think the Jerusalem trip it was really it was the longest. So we have the most pictures. <laughs> so these are the pictures that when Shifu was in Jerusalem. 所以呢，呃，特别是呃，他们到耶路撒冷的这个，我记得师傅那时候是为了要跟领袖们就是促进中东的和平嘛，所以师傅就老呃晚年的时候其实还是呃抱着这个生病的身体，还是就是跑到中东地区哈，然后去跟不同的宗教领袖做交流。那刚 Rebecca 菩萨分享，就是因为在耶路撒冷待的时间比较久，所以照片会比较多哈，有比较多的珍贵照片可以跟大家分享。Yes, so this is a picture of um. Shifu being invited to give a talk to a group in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Oh, where is it? In um Israel. Okay. So they later went to Israel's that Tel um Tel Aviv's place. Then Shifu was invited to give a talk. Uh, to do the talk. Okay. So this is a picture. And um, as I mentioned earlier, during these travels, I was um also working on Shifu's autobiography. So I was 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 also working on And um, finding time to interview him whenever possible. And um, one thing I learned was that he Shifu made really good use of his time. So he didn't just kind of hang out and do nothing. He like squeezed time here and there to fit in the interviews um, to get the book done. Um, without doing that, this book would not be done. And um, same thing when he was teaching retreats. Um, so he would say that, well, we can do interview during the evening service. <laughs> so during every day during the evening service, that instead of joining in evening service, then I would um, go to the master quarter to um, interview Shifu. That was like about like a forty-five minute um, service. So that was that that was um, that was a lot of uh, memory of spending those time in. Um, the master quarter in, uh, in at DDRC, interviewing him, and one time I remember, I don't. Um, a lot of these interview questions actually was asking Shifu about sort of details of his life, like growing up or in the army. Um, Shifu was always amused that people will, would be interested in reading about that, but he. Answered this question anyway, and one time when he was asked about his life in the army, um, he was telling me, explaining to to me about the daily routine of training in the army, and he was actually getting so um, into it that he actually got up and tried to show me, demonstrate to me the kind of uh, push up that they had to do in the army for the training <laughs> as a young soldier. 所以刚刚有菩萨已经开始笑了，对不对？好，可是呃呃那个呃，我先先复习一下，就是刚刚那个 Rebecca 菩萨分享，就是就在那几年当中呢，他们一边就是他一边在帮师傅准备那个就是雪中主机啊，他的那个自传。好，那他观察到说，师傅实际上非常善于就是在忙当中呢挤出那个时间。好，所以呢，比如说他们就说啊，那我们就是不要参加晚课，那晚课时间我们就来呃把这个呃就是那个呃自传当中需要问到的一些问题，然后他就来做访谈，大概大概是四十几分钟，四十五分钟时间，所以他们两个他就是晚课时间他就没有去参加参加晚课，就去师傅那边，然后就是提出大家就是那个要写自传的那个呃菩萨们所提供的问题，然后访访谈师傅，那师傅就回答。那通常师傅是他们问的问题，他都会很认真的回答。好，只是他说有人真的会有兴趣吗？哈，可他还是认真的回答。比如说，其中有一段就是他那个有人那个问题就说，哎，师傅的那个军中岁月到底是怎么样过的？好，那师傅就认真回答的过程当中呢，就回答到很认真，到最后就说，哎，他甚至说站起来示范说他们如何当时受训，在军中如何受训，然后做仰卧起坐等等这些的，他就有机会看到师傅的这一面了。And um, besides Footprint in the Snow, actually, um, another book that I worked on um, in 2000 and 2001 was Chan Comes West. Um, I don't know if you have heard of that book. Um, this is a book that, um, that happened after the 49-day retreat. That was the first time I met John Crook Shifu's first Les Dames. And um, in that same 
year in the fall, Shifu gave transmission to his second and third lay dharma as Simon Child and Max Kalin. And after that happened, I thought, well, maybe it would be nice for people to know about the stories of these teachers, um, these disciples of Shifu. Um, maybe it would be helpful for help for, for bringing Chan to, to the West. So I just had that idea. I, I really, the idea I came up with a booklet. It became a book. Um, what happened was that um, Shifu, Shifu sort of signed on to the idea and wrote a really nice article about his views on transmission. And during this, during this um, process of putting together the book, um, I realized Shifu used the opportunity to uh, kind of compile the lineage chart uh, of the Dhamma drama lineage. And so I learned a lot about the Dhamma heirs uh, from their stories and also Shifu's view about transmission, um, particularly clarifying a lot of um, misunderstandings revolving around Dhamma transmission. And of course, also learned a lot about our lineage. And um, I spent a lot of time asking Shifu about sort of all the question, all the nitty gritty about the lineage chart and also the verses that will be used to give future Dharma heirs their Dharma name. Uh, it was, that was actually a, a, a very elaborate system. And I had to translate all that into English. And I realized that I have to really make sure I get this right because the, these Western Dharma heirs, they rely on this explanation to give their future Dharma heirs uh, and their Dharma heirs, Dharma heirs, uh, their Dharma name. So um, it, was, it was quite an elaborate project. And um, the, the book was published, for, uh, the first edition was published in 2001. And the second edition with a lot of new material um, was finally published in 2016. Wow. OK, you've got to help me. <laughs> 所以呢,在這邊的話,剛剛就是分享,除了就是那個雪中足跡的這部傳記之外呢,其實他同時也幫師父做另外一件事情,就是說特別是在2000年的時候呢,我們畫面上這個就是不知道大家有沒有看過這
离得非常清楚。对，所以他觉得自己是真的是一个重责大任，而且师傅在做那个呃传法的意义这件事情，他过程当中除了翻译过程之外，他也学到说，其实很多的观念，师傅离心的很多观念，他都觉得说那个都很重要，所以他也就是透过英文翻译把这些事情都把它记载下来，都呈现在这个书里面了。好，所以未来禅法在西方的过程红传的过程当中，就有一个脉络可循。So I believe、um, this is time for. Ah, then he said this book, the first book, is in 2001. It was published. Then later, there are some new materials that came out. So the new version is published in 2016. Ah, you can read it. I apologize. I was planning to bring a copy of it, but I forgot. So he was planning to bring a copy of it, but I forgot. So he was planning to bring a copy of it, but I forgot. So he was planning to bring a copy of it, but I forgot. So he was planning to bring a copy of it, but I forgot. So he was planning to bring a copy of it, I was talking about translating、uh, for Shifu、uh, and working on his books. There were also a few other、uh, important opportunities for me to practice with Shifu.、Um, one was actually participating in the Dharma Teachers Training Program with Shifu. So、um, actually, it was starting in '99 that my husband and I began to、um, partake in the. Dharma teachers training program with Shifu, and also served as the coordinator for the program for the English speaking、um, trainees in the program. And、um, from that training, we started.、Um, I myself also started started teaching meditation workshops and also、um, giving Dharma lectures、um, as part of my practice. So、um, teaching become an important part of my practice. 好，那除了刚刚所说的说在禅期当中啊，或者是呃跟着师傅到处去呃弘法，然后做翻译做交流，以及刚刚说准备一些呃他刚刚的一些书之外呢，其实他另外也参与了另外一项真的跟师傅学习哈，然后学呃禅修的一个很重要的一个呃活动，那就是说参加呃那个呃就是禅修老师。问的应该是禅修师资，对不对？哈，禅修师资在西方的禅修师资的一个训练的一个呃呃过那个课程，好 program。Dharma lectures like for Dharma lecture, yeah, for Dharma lecture for for 讲师，佛法讲师，对，佛法讲师。哦，所以不是光是禅修讲师，禅修师资，禅修师资跟佛法讲师两种。OK， 所以禅修师资跟那个佛法讲师两种的训练课程，那特别是他其实从一九九九年就开始跟他的同修有参加这样的一种培训课程了。好，那后来在那段时间里面是特别的密集，所以他的修行部分当中有一个部分就是必须要去教。对不对？去做那个呃佛法的教学，哦佛法的讲授。那另外一方面就是要做那个禅修的指导吗？对，那这个其实作为老师、作为师资的，一方面当做培训、受训的人，一方面当做训练的人，然后设计这些课程，都成为他修行的一个部分。Am I right? Yeah. And、um, also later on,、um, Shifu also、um, blessed me with another opportunity to practice. By asking me, and also Wei Tan, some of you might know him,、um, to help with,、uh, help him with、uh, forming the board for Dharma Drum Retreat Center,、um, to help support operating the retreat center,、uh, which afforded me the opportunity to learn about aspects of running a retreat center that I would not otherwise have, and、um, those that was very valuable experience for me.、Um, As a Dharma teacher now, so. 好，那另外一个呢？呃，另外一个，他觉得深受有深深深觉得受到祝福的师傅给他一个机会，好，就是加入了那个呃禅修中心的 retreat， 呃，像刚像刚禅修中心的一个那个。董事会哦，成立董事会啊、哦，他刚刚给我提哈提示对，好、哦、在那个香港中心成立了董事会，那在过程当中，他们必须要去学会说如何去呃维持一个禅修中心的运作，然后去这个呃筹措经费等等这些。那那时候他的合作对象还包括应该是维吾吧，陈维吾对，嗯对，所以他们就是从这个过程当中呢，也去学习该如何去呃。经营一个禅修中心，然后维持一个禅修中心的一个运作，那也是他的一个呃修行的一个部分。嗯、um, um, 
also, during those years, um, I was also blessed with working with Shimu's Dhamma heirs closely, um, especially John Crook and Simon Child when they started coming to DDRC to lead retreats. Um, and they, I attended those retreats and then they um, started asking me to assist in those retreats. And actually that's how I came to learn to um, give retreat interviews and lead Chan retreats. Um, on, it's under their direct training. 好，那所以在这些活动之外呢，另外有一项，Rebecca觉得真的是也是很有福报哈，有这样的机会哈，就是在呃可以在那个师傅的西方法子，比如说像John Crook 那他们就要求Rebecca帮助他们做助理兼香的工作啦,或者是去做小餐啦,甚至说有时候在他们的指导之下带一些产期的活动。好,那也就是在这样的学习过程当中呢,他就真的是更深有体会,跟我们的西方
I want to use the little bit of time we have left um, to share a few things I learned from Shifu through working with him um, in these various capacities. 好，所以他想要用最后的这一点点时间，能跟大家分享他如何呃跟着师傅在学习，然后特别是在上面所分享的这些活动当中呢，跟着师傅学习。One of the most important things I learned was his great vow. Uh, in particular, never being um complacent, um even when he had become um. A very great Chan master with um, the retreat centers all all over uh, Taiwan and the world. He never stopped thinking about what he can do to bring Chan's to bring the benefit of Chan to more people, especially to people who uh, would not have stepped in a monastery or a meditation center. 好，所以呢，呃，他第一个呢，他印象最深刻的或者学习最多的呢，是师傅的大悲愿心。好，特别是呃，师傅从来不会说觉得自己已经满足了，就说他已经有这么多在世界上有这么多禅中心呢，或者在世界上带了这么多禅禅修活动。但是呢，他从来不会停止去思考，说我该怎么样让禅法的利益，让更多人能够获得禅法的利益。他常常在想这件事情。And one of the key ways I observed him doing that was in his engagement, active engagement in the World Council of Religious Leaders, and also later on the uh, uh, GPIW, the Global a、uh, Global Peace Initiative of Women. Some of you may have heard about that. Even though he was incredibly busy、um, trying to finish the construction of Damodar Mountain and also his health challenges, and、um, so it was an example of the Bodhisattva path,、um, where wherever sentient beings need us, we go and do our best to bring benefits by fully engaging and not thinking about whether that is Buddhism. Or is this Chan? Because sometimes you would think, like, what are you doing in these conferences?、Um, and it's because we can't understand how that actually can、um, benefit other sentient beings. And、um, it's because actually Chan is formless. Chan practice does not take a particular form. And、um, really, Chan is about being fully engaged in life. Working with causes and conditions that present themselves to us, and applying our wisdom and compassion. Um, so, actually, he has the opportunity, especially in some of his master's work, to observe his master's great wisdom. 其中之一的就是师傅的非常非常积极的投入，比如说，呃，刚刚所说的世界宗教。领袖的会议，好，他们的活动当中，或者是后来呃一个叫做 GPIW， 就是呃全球女性呃促进和平的这样的一个组织，好，也是师傅在联合国大会发表那个呃主题演说之后，其实吸引到很多国际和国际的一个领袖，然后他们就特别是女性的领领领袖，就呃筹组这样一个组织。那或者是只要有机会的话呢，师傅都会，因为那个时候其实一方面是法鼓山的建设是在如火如荼的进行当中，那师傅身体状况也不是非常好，但是呢，他就是在他就是只要这些组织或这些地方或者任何众生有需要的时候，师傅就是毫不吝惜的去给予去投入。那这一点的话，让瑞贝卡菩萨就真的觉得说，这就是菩萨道的实践，这是菩萨道的一个视线。Sorry, I forgot the later part. I I thought that you said it very well. I, 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 好，那刚刚 Rebecca 菩萨分享是说，其实禅是没有固定的一个形式的。好，只要能够利益众生，能够去
慈悲、智慧，去让众生得到利益，这些都是禅的实践。So where this is when causes and conditions call us to be of service and contribute. Just a moment. This is the one I forgot. 对不起，通常是最后一段会忘记。所以呢，他就说，随顺因缘的去付出，去利益众生，这一点非常重要。So when causes and conditions call us to be of service and contribute in particular in any particular capacity, we do our best. And use the opportunity to learn and also to grow ourselves, and that's what I watch Shifu do. Okay, because this he actually talks very deeply, so I need to pay attention to it. We talked about the fact that he was using the power of the Buddha to help the people. 利益众生，那其实中间有很深刻的内容，就是说，根据当下的相关的因缘，然后呢，我们去尽自己所有的能力，用自己的当下能够做到的这个能力去回应，然后去服务。那从过程当中呢，也可以去贡献自己，贡献自己能够有的心力，然后呢，尽尽心尽力。用这些机会来学习，并且来成长。Thank you. And、um, so watching Shifu、um, engage in his international work that way、um, really helped me think about how to approach my work as a Dharma teacher.、Um, Shifu showed me that practicing, practicing as a Dharma teacher involves more than teaching meditation workshops or give Dharma talks or leading retreats. We need to share the wisdom and practice of Chan with people who do not attend Chan retreats or Dhamma talks in a Dhamma center. How do we go about doing that? Is something we need to really think about. So, for me, it means to work with causes and conditions when they emerge.、Um, last year, this time,、um, the Buddhist Action Coalition. Um, in the New York area, um, you know, more people like Bhikkhu Bodhi,、um, Greg Snyder, who form, who founded the Brooklyn Zen Center,、um, Roshi O'Hara, who、um, who is the guiding teacher of、um, Village Zendo in New York City. They organized an event、um, early last year to bring Buddhists together to find ways to be more engaged.、Um, To find ways to be more engaged in our difficult、um, situation nowadays, and、um, I, I committed to attend after I learned about it, so that I actually want to go and learn what how to do it. And、uh, but I got this phone call, and they want me to、um, give an opening address、um, for the event. I was like, I. I I didn't know what to talk about.、Uh, I wouldn't know what I was going to say, but they asked me, and I was like, "Well, you know, learning from what she did, I I said yes."、Um, so、um, I agreed anyway. And、um, when and so、um, what I learned from Shifu was that he always、um, thought about what the audience will need, and that's how I approached thinking about the the talk, and.、Um, So it wasn't really me thinking about what I wanted to say,、uh, but it's really about、um, how to how how to help the people in the audience to think about how to engage、um, in、uh, in in the situ in our in partly part, how to engage politically by using Chan practice, and、um, it was actually a very important process for growth. To for me to contemplate how to apply Chan practice、um, to be more engaged citizen in a democratic society, so that we can all together co-create a more just and peaceful society instead of waiting for someone else to do the work.、Um, But、um, if I didn't just say I didn't say yes, no, I just want to go attend,、uh, then I wouldn't have the opportunity to 
um, contemplate these issues and um, also allow myself to grow through the process. And so um, throughout the entire process, every step of the way, I was thinking about all the lessons I've learned from Shifu all those years. So, Last year? Yeah. 他们其实有在他们的社区嘛在他们的那个地方那个地区里面他们就有一群宗教领袖嘛在在纽约的时候他们就有一群领袖呢就组织了一个叫做呃他自己他有他有notes然后对所以呢就有一些好像他们就是一
he was incredibly perceptive, so he could get a lot of information um, by observing uh, what's going on, observing what everyone's doing um, in addition to the talking. And so that gave him some um, understanding of what, what he needed to do to, to reach um, the, the practitioners there. 所以非常谢谢这位菩萨的问题特别是他会去很尊重去倾听这个西方众他们的那个组织者他们的建议比如说他就记得说师父其实在受邀去威尔斯英国的威尔斯然后去主持禅期的时候他就会很认真的听那个张克鲁给他的建议然后呢他们去分享的这个他们当地的社区的一个状况那同时的话呢在我们现场的人在活动的时候呢师傅会很用心的倾听并且很用心的去观察所以他可以很多细节当中就可以去观察到对方当
能够接触到很多人，然后又您跟师傅的像这个照片所秀的另外一些法子，你也有跟他们在学习，在你现在也在西方在教书。接触很多西方人士，就以您的这个角色来分享你的经验，我想很多人都是可以受益的。谢谢。If if there is actually interest, I will do my best. <laughs> I learned from Shifu.、Um, that's actually how he responded when Kenneth Wapner.、Um, Approached him to work on the book、uh, Footprints in the Snow. He was like, "Who is going to want to read my stories?" And then Kenneth and I were both like, "Oh yeah, people would really get inspired, and because everyone entered the drama differently, so when they kind of can connect with you as a person, then the next book they're going to pick up is your drama book. They don't start with your drama book. Every there are many different drama doors, and so I watched it. We were sort of like." Okay, <laughs> if you think so,、uh, so I will learn from him. So if、um, if if enough people believe that would be useful, then I will do it. Yes, thank you. 好，所以刚刚我们单教授很慈悲的为大众哈，请 Rebecca 看看我有以了以后未来是不是有机会写书或者是写成文章分享这些经验。那 Rebecca 菩萨的回应是说，如果说有足够的需要的话，当然是他要跟师傅学习，因为他刚刚分享说。其实当时那个呃，有人希望说师傅可以就是出一本就是我们现在的那个《雪中足迹》这本自传的话，师傅的第一个反应说啊，有人会有兴趣读我这个传记书吗？然后呢，那时候申请的人就说，当然了，他们当然会有兴趣啊。那个您的书的话，您的传记一定会启发很多人。那当他们因为他们读传记的话，可以觉得说跟您本人产生连接。所以读传记，透过读传记的话，就觉得说，哎，我这我跟他觉得说，嗯，自己生命有产生连接。那当然，他们下一本书会提起来看的话，就是你的禅的著作啦。所以这个是很好的事情啊。然后 Rebecca 回答我们尚老师的话，就是说，可以啊，我我要跟师傅学习。如果师傅是这样做的话，我当然要效法师傅。如果说未来有足够的有这么多菩萨觉得说我的分享会对他们有帮助的话，我当然会努力的去做。可以吗？非常好，<笑>绝对比我讲的好。老<笑>师，听到不？卢贝和菩萨，你好、嗯。我想要请问两个问题。嗯、一个是，呃，您应该是在西方的世界成长的孩子，也就是说，其实你说英语会比说中文还要。呃，就是就是怎么讲，就是流利。那所以其实思考的方式、生活的方式也都是西方人。那我很好奇的是，像师傅这样的一个中国来的老和尚，英文也讲得不清不楚。当然，您也看他的书，跟他学打坐。但是真正触动你这个西方孩子的心的这个点，到底是什么？这是第一个问题，我不知道我有没有形容得很清楚。然后第二个是我很好奇，师傅到中东去的那一趟旅程。要不是透过那个阿斗菩萨的他的声音的话，其实我们不太容易去知道师傅那一趟旅行发生了哪一些，就是就是影像上，或者是当然师傅自己也有写一些，但是好像不像您这样子全程跟着，我好羡慕。我看到有一幕是你们到一个人的，好像是一个人的家里，呃，大家都很紧张。然后师傅坐在一个椅子上，你坐在师傅的后面，帮他翻译，翻译给对方听，说我们是带来和平的讯息的那一趟旅程。好像很多人担心炸弹随时会掉下来，或者是枪，嗯，会有子弹射过来。可是好像这一趟旅行，呃，带你带给你印象最深刻的是什么？可不可以跟我们分享一点点？好，谢谢。好，谢谢 ，Thank you。Um, The first question.、Uh, well, I I did grow up in Hong Kong, so I I'm kind of Chinese. So、uh, I but because I went to English school、um, in Hong Kong, that's why my Chinese is not not that great. It actually、um, I'm sorry, and、uh, so、um, and also because I、um, because I used English for my academic work.、Um, For, since since、uh, secondary school, that's why I largely like take notes and and think in English. 
Um, that's why I'm talking in English. And um, so um, when Ye was curious, when I met Shifu, um, I couldn't understand his uh, Chinese, but I think the, the reason why I was able to connect with Shifu was um, he, I don't know how he taught here, but I was told he taught very differently. The way he taught in New York was that he um, was very close to us. He just talked to us like uh, another person. Um, that means I never felt that I was, you know, like someone who was tiny or um, far away. Um, he felt very close to me, like, like I was talking to my dad. And um, so it was, um, I, I think sometimes I did not act respect, respectfully enough because I didn't know all the etiquette. And that's actually one of the things I always felt, maybe I wasn't talking or acting in the correct way, but Shifu never um, made me feel that. And he actually was always like, don't worry about it. Like I always got the vibe from him that don't worry about it, you're fine. And so I, that made it possible for me to really connect with him and, um, and listen to, uh, and learn from him. Yeah. So do you want to? So the first question, the first question is, Rebecca Bussa is in Hong Kong. So she's also a part of China. So maybe, 对，所以，然后，但是他的那个教育过程当中的话呢，就是他从中学就开始上英文学校，好，所以他的中文一直都不是很好。他的他从中学以上呢，都一路都是用英文在学习，然后他思考啊、模式等等，全部都是英文的。那可是他虽然说听说有些呃，听说师傅在台湾跟在呃。西方教法是不太一样的，但是他们在纽约的时候，他觉得说，其实师傅跟我跟他们的关系是非常亲近的，好，就是感觉上就是呃，就是很亲近。然后呢，就是跟他互动啊，跟他对谈啊，他会觉得说，就是一个很亲近的人，就像跟父亲相处一样。好，那有时候他会觉得说，是不是我好像不太跟师傅讲话不敬啊，还是有没有什么呃逾矩的地方啊？那师傅给他的讯息通常就是说，不用担心，你做得很好，你都会做得很好。所以他就是觉得一直很自在，跟在师傅身边其实是非常非常自在的，然后就觉得很亲近这样子，所以他就有办法，就是说在师傅身边呢，然后呢努力做好自己的工作。Um, and then, have you answered the question? Yeah, and the second question about um, thank you for that question. Actually, that was some of the things I was um, planning to share, but I ran out of time. So, ah, so thank you for your question. Ah, because he just wanted to share, but because of time, he didn't share. So, he didn't share. So, he didn't share. So, um, one of the most memorable trips for me actually was when we went to Jerusalem. Probably because it was a long, it was a fairly long trip. And um, so it, one of the things that um, really um, stood out for me in that, in that trip in Jerusalem was, uh, well, there are a number of things. One of the things was um, we were at a lunch um, that we, we thought we were at a lunch, uh, but um, that it was very light lunch. Um, so it was snack, actually. So um, then, but like uh, because of Shifu's um, health condition, he his attendant brought the, him the lunch, actual um, real full lunch food. And when um, we discovered that it wasn't going to be, uh, not everyone's going to have like a lunch food, like we're just going to have crackers and stuff. Um, what Shifu did was he did he told um, Fasher not to serve him his food. And um, so that so that um, other people would not be uh, watching him eating his meal uh, when the, when we were when we were really um, going to just have a very light snack there, and I, uh, it, it left a very deep impression on me because um, I knew Shifu's stomach was very uh, weak, and I also have very bad stomach. I know how painful it is. Um, to have stomach pain, which I'm sure Shifu was suffering from that, that whole time. Uh, it took another two, three hours for us to um, get back to the hotel for him to have his, um, have his, have his meal. Uh, but it taught me that, you know, if we have to, in, he was willing to endure hardship and pain um, so that he, his action would not cause um, 
other people discomfort and suffering. And、uh, it, it left a very deep impression on me. 哦，所以其实呢，那一趟的耶路撒冷之旅呢，其中一个刚刚还有讲，我忘了翻哈，就是其实那趟旅程相当的长，蛮久的。好，那另外一个他刚刚就是呃回应法师的问题，说哎有没有印象比较深刻的？那就是说其中有一次他们就是呃要吃午餐了，那结果后来发现说这个其实只是类似像点心的，不是说真的是一个很正式的一餐。那当师傅发现说，哎，大家只是吃的很简单的点心的时候呢，其实侍者都有帮师傅准备的整个很完整的一个一个午餐。好，可是当师傅发现大家吃的都是很简单的东西的时候，他就请侍者法师说，不要把他的食物拿出来。好，这样的话不要让大众在场的大众觉得不舒服。对，那 Rebecca 这根据，因为其实他自己他知道说师傅的肠胃不好，好，那他自己。瑞贝卡自己肠胃也不好，所以他知道说，当你饿起来其实是很不舒服的事情。好，而且呢，他们这顿午餐之后，可能要到两三个小时之后才能够回到饭店，师傅才有机会呢去把他的午餐好好的吃下来。好，所以呢，他透过这个过程的观察，发现说，其实师傅真的是很体贴到很体贴入微，就是说他发现在场的大众没有正式吃午餐，只是简单的点心的时候，他会宁愿去忍受那个痛跟。那个肠胃不适的状况，然后也是要让现场大众觉得很自在。哎，这他印象非常深刻的一个事情。And another thing that、um, left a deep impression for me was actually, um, because there there were religious leaders from different traditions, um, and they were all Westerners. And、um, in the West, we hug like we and.、Um, So、um, I saw Shifu.、Um, he gave this priest a hug, and it was clear that might have been one of his very first hug of somebody. It was a little bit awkward, and、um, like the action was very little. But like I was so、um, touched by Shifu、um, being willing to kind of venture outside his comfort zone, because as a monk you don't do that any. Because he want it was. Um, the reason why that trip was so long was it was also a, a community building、um, experience for the religious leaders to spend more time together to build trust so that they can work together on promoting peace、um, with other religious leaders. And、um, so Shifu was willing to step outside his comfort zone to help facilitate that effort. And、um, I, I remember that、um, because. It, I made a note of、um, just the importance of being willing to、um, go out of our comfort zone. Of course, like I had those comfort zone too.、Um, for example, one of the things was I'm a very private person. I actually don't really like to be known.、Um, so, and、um, but because people、um, wanted to kept asking me if I have a blog, if they can find my. Articles and talks, and so、um, I created a website, and and it was like a big step for me to to do that, and that was actually、um, inspired by watching Shifu、um, do that in that trip. 好，那另外一件事情让他印象很深刻的是，因为那一趟的旅游为什么呃那那一趟的旅行为什么那么久呢？其实当中另外一个重要因素是说，他是一群宗教领袖。一起出去，然后呢，要建立彼此的互信，然后呢，要营造一个宗教领袖之间的一个社群的这样子一个共同运作一个团队的这样一个重要的一次的旅行啊，所以呢，其实他目睹了师，可能是他觉得说。那那可能是师傅第一次，因为那个在场的一些宗教领袖都是西方种，好，他们其实很习惯就是互相拥抱。那大家知道说，在这边的话，其实法师们是不会有做这种动作的。可是，在那一次的时候呢，他第一次看到师傅就是说，主动的去跟西方宗教领袖拥抱。虽然他他觉得那好像是第一次师傅跟人家拥抱，因为感觉好像不是自不是很自在，不是很自然这样，他很感动。为什么呢？因为师傅会勇于为了要跟宗教领袖之间建立这种互信的一个怎么讲共同体的一个关系的时候，他愿意走出自己的舒适圈。
好，所以他那时候自己有做了一个笔记，说你要勇于走出自己的舒适圈，为了要让大众能够去建立一个生命共同体的感觉，你必须有时候必要的时候，必须要能够勇于走出自己的舒适圈。那后来他自己就是很多菩萨们就会问他说：“哎，你有没有部落格啊？你有没有网站什么的？我可以去哪里找到你的文章啊？”那他就因为他自己本身是一个非常重视隐私的一个人，所以对他而言，他有很多舒适圈的设定。那当人家问他这个问题的时候，他就刚开始是觉得说啊怪怪的，但是呢，他后来想到师傅示范的这个。他就觉得说，我也要勇敢地走出自己的舒适圈，所以他就是也去架设了一个网站，然后开始让大众有机会去看到他的所思所行这样子。So j u s a couple of things, yeah, thank you. 也就是这些让他印象很深刻的事情。谢谢法师的问题。我想请问教授啊，您跟在师傅身边，真的是很令我们大多数人羡慕啊。那我请教授，师傅对您的影响？师傅对我的影响力，对，不管你在人生在顺境逆境的时候，呃，师傅对你的影响力，你是说你什么时候会想到师傅？哎，谢谢。All the time， <笑>他的回答很简单，随时随地都想到师傅的教诲。哦，那这样好，谢谢。随时随地，好。